Today you'll see a cardigan that is not your common cardigan. This one has a curved front shape and the band that goes sewn onto it is also curved. The fact that this band is also curved makes it lie perfect, super flat, super neat. I'm showing you how to sew it and look at my ponty knit. It's a beautiful print. Stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and you will see a lot of sewing today. Although the sewing segment is not too long, it includes all the important parts that you need so that you can make yourself this super cool cardigan as well. What I'm talking about is the new Fraser cardigan from Love Notions. Most cardigans are an open front, but then they go straight and towards the hem, you have some sort of straight angle there. This one's different, this one's curved, and I really like this. <laughs> now, you might have seen other cardigan patterns that do have that curve on the front, but what's attached to that is just a rectangle band, and that usually creates a lot of puckers, and it's not a really nice, neat look. The difference with the Fraser cardigan is that the band that goes attached all around the cardigan, or around the neck, at the back, down the front, follows the curve on the front there, goes all the way around the back, it's curved two layers there so it's gonna look really flat really neat you can sew that band as a regular band or you can also add a hood when you add a hood you have an extra piece on the top the band also includes the top of that hood there a little bit different and a few more steps than if you're just sewing the regular neckline that doesn't have the hood you have long sleeves you can hem the sleeves normally by turning it up and top stitching or you can cut your sleeve shorter at a cut line there and add on a cuff there is a center back seam for shaping i love that i always appreciate that at the back it should cover your bottom now on the sides you will see some pockets they are so easy to sew because it's just basically one piece that you sew onto the front piece that you base on the edges and then the edges of the pocket will be caught in the band there so it's really really easy to put together because the Fraser cardigan is a new pattern it is 25% off during the release week so if you like the style and you want to give it a go it's always good to get it when it costs a little bit less I will leave you my affiliate link down below if you'd like to use it to purchase your pattern also when you click on my link and it takes you to the Love Notions website when you're checking out you can add my code Karina10 and that will give you an extra 10% off on top of the discounted price already so it's a little bonus for you because you watch my content thank you so much for using my link and supporting the work that I do in that way you need neat fabrics of course this will not work with a woven fabric your fabric needs to stretch horizontally at least 25% some vertical stretch is always welcome just for comfort the armhole or this area also benefits from some vertical stretch so make sure that your fabric stretches correctly if you're not used to testing your fabric and seeing for 25 percent all i do is place my fabric on a cutting mat and i measure four inches there and i stretch and see if it reaches up to five if it reaches comfortably up to five it means that there's 25 percent stretch so that's pretty easy i would say that the fraser cardigan is best suited for medium weight knit fabrics because of the curved band feature, I think with a really drapey knit, it could collapse and look wavy, stretch out a little bit. So I would be careful to choose a fabric that has a little bit of structure. Good fabrics could be French Terry, Cotton Lycra, Liverpool Knits, Ponty Roma would be perfect. Some sweater knits are also semi-structured. I can certainly tell the difference between the sweater knits that I have. Some are very drapey, very floppy, and others are pretty structured. You can see by just holding them and see how they stand up on their own a little bit. So just make sure that your fabric has a little bit of structure. I think you'll have a better result with the curve of the bands and it will look much neater than if you choose something really drapey. I would not make this in a rayon spandex or something really lightweight like that. I think it would not look good. I think the curve will just not work. I've chosen this beautiful striking Ponty Roma and I was so excited to sew it up and I found some Ponty Roma in Santiago in Chile. For me it's really hard to find Ponty Roma here in Brazil. Basically impossible. The few I've found are just solids and in that shop I found prints. I got three of them. So beautiful. I was just so excited. In my mind I knew it was way up there in my priority like I needed to make a garment out of that so I'm really happy I got the Fraser cardigan out of my Ponty Roma it's perfect it's got the right amount of stretch and it's structured enough to hold the structure of the bands it's just the perfect fabric because the Fraser cardigan is a new pattern it includes up to size 5x that goes up to a 59 and a half inch hip and you have a standard and a full bust option now this is an open front cardigan if you're sewing the standard bust you will have a bit of ease around the bust about two inches so when you wear it it'll be nice and comfortable and the band will sort of meet the center right there when you go down because there's a curve at the hip area 
it won't meet the center because of that curve. So there'll be about a three to four inch gap there at the hips, but because of the curve, not because the cardigan is tight. Now remember, if you're sewing a full bust option, you always have a bit more ease at the waist and the hips also. So about two extra inches at the bust, waist and hips if you're sewing the full bust option. That will work for you if you have a four or more inch difference between your high bust and your full bust. I sew a size extra large with a standard bust. Now this is an easy to fit pattern. When you look at the pattern pieces, the side seams are sort of straight. There's no definite going in and going out that you need to worry about the height of where that should be. I figured out, you know what, I'm gonna just make it. <laughs> I measured the sleeve pattern and it seemed to be fine for my arms as well. So I made zero fitting adjustments to the Fraser cardigan, zero. Different to when I sew fitted bodices or other styles that do have more anatomical features on the pattern, like a bust height, a waist height that you can see. In this case, because it's just a relaxed fit cardigan, you know, it was much easier. I just decided to go with it and I'm super happy. I think you won't have many headaches with fitting here. One thing I need to mention. Now, for example, if you want to blend from one size at the waist, to another at the hips or from the bust all the way down to the hips, you need to take into account that when you cut out your band pieces, the band pieces are curved. At the bottom of that curve, that is what is going to go on the side seams. You need to use the size that you're cutting for your hips for the bottom edge of that band, for that curve. Make sure you take into account the band because if you just cut a smaller band, it's not gonna fit the side seam where you blend it out to a larger size. And the same goes if you do the inverse. If you blend to a smaller hip, choose the smaller size there at the bottom of that curved band. I have filmed a lot of the sewing for you. The only thing I didn't include was sewing in the sleeves. I have videos about sewing sleeves already on the channel. I'm sewing my sleeves on the round and I left that to the very end. In the pattern, as you find in most neat patterns, the instructions appear sewing the sleeves on the flat but you can see how to put this together i am sewing it a little bit differently maybe not what you expect i still have a special relationship with my serger for me just because i'm sewing a knit it doesn't mean automatically i'm going to sew all my seams with the serger i go on a case-by-case -case basis and I just assess each fabric, what's gonna look better. You see, I'm not sewing on the serger. I am using it, but I'm still using my sewing machine quite a bit. I am not sewing the version with the hood. I could not get the hood pieces to fit my fabric, so I'm sewing the regular one without the hood. So let's see how to sew the Fraser cardigan. These are all the pattern pieces for the Fraser cardigan. Over here are the main pieces. This is the back, it's not cut on the fold. There is a center back seam with some shaping there. This is the front piece, you can see that it's curved like that. And the piece that you see right on top is actually the pocket. That is the band that finishes the top of the pocket and it's the easiest pocket you could ever sew because all you need to do is sew the band to the pocket and then base the pocket onto the front and carry on as normal. Then you put your hand in there. You have a regular sleeve. You can see the typical type of armhole shape. That is the long sleeve right there. And then to finish the edges of the cardigan, you have a very interesting band. It's curved to follow this shape right here. So that little piece that you see up there, there's two of them and that finishes the back part of the neckline. Then following the front of the cardigan, you will have this long curved band. You need two pairs. That's why there's two there and two there. They're mirrored for both sides. And then this one is the band that finishes the bottom of the back. So there are three band pieces. All of them get sewn together and form a type of oval shape first. And then you sew that onto the edge of the neckline and that finishes the neckline and the front and the bottom. Super fun. I'll show you a little bit about the notches on the bands that are gonna help you put it together and not get confused. Okay, here we have the bottom band. It's like that, but I'm just scrunching it up so it fits on the frame. And you have the front bands that finished quite curved there. Here you'll see a single notch and you'll see a single notch there. That helps you put those together without any confusion. When we go to the top of the band here, you'll see two notches there, two notches there. And on this small back neckline band, you also have two notches there and two notches there. So it's very easy. It's like putting together a puzzle. My chosen fabric is Ponte Roma. It's Medium weight, I think it's a little bulky to serge together, so I have gone ahead and serge the edges separately first 
and I'll be using my sewing machine to sew the seams and then press them open. I always prefer that finish on Ponte Roma rather than just sewing directly on the serger. So it might take me a little while longer. Same as with this center back seam. I'm always happier to have it pressed open than surging it together and then pressing it to one side just because the fabric can get a little bit bulky like that. This is the shape of the pocket. Super easy, it's gonna be quite a large pocket. This is the pocket band. Now if you measure from here to here, you'll see that the band is a little shorter. That's fine because it'll help the pocket not gape. All we need to do with this band is fold it wrong sides together like this. Pin it here and then stretch it to match the top and serge it on and then you fold it up, that's it. And I'll be top stitching it flat and that's how you finish the edge of the pocket. It's extremely easy. Just being careful to keep all the raw edges together at all times and go stretching only the band not the pocket that's underneath while I sew them together. That's how it looks. When you press it, it's gonna lie flat. Just press the seam allowance down like that. What I'm gonna do is some edge stitching just to keep this nice and flat. I like to do that with medium weight knits when I can. And then you just repeat the same for the other pocket. I'm using my blind hem foot with a needle to the left and this always gives a really perfect edge stitch. Always looks super neat, keeps it flat. Here is one of the front pieces and I have pan basted the pocket on. So on the side seam, what I did was just serge it on because I'm going to be having the side seam serge separately. So that fixes that edge of the pocket in place. But from there, all around this curve, I hand basted it to keep it in place. There you can see some huge stitches. It's just transformed this piece into one and this is how you're going to put your hand in your pocket. So you can forget about the pocket now. All along this curve, there will be the band here and that will catch the main front and the pocket at the same time. Super clean finish, super easy pockets. Here I'm just sewing the center back seam, a really long seam. There is some shaping there, so I would always appreciate that. I wouldn't try to eliminate that. I had searched the edges previously. I'm very happy with how this looks. Super flat, super neat. And I don't think I can achieve that by just searching them together in one go and then pressing it to the side because the bulk is more. So I'm happy, I like sewing ponty like I'm sewing a woven basically. I would not sew it directly on the serger. I always like using my sewing machine and I'm using a shallow zigzag. It almost looks like a straight stitch, very neat. I've joined the back and the front at the shoulder seam, so I'm gonna sew that now. You can see at the back I've used a little bit of interfacing right on the edge and that's just to stabilize. I would not skip this. I think this is an important step. There is gonna be a long sleeve. The fabric is medium weight, it can weigh it down and stretch it out over time. So because I'm sewing this separately and this is going to be pressed open, I thought interfacing was the best way. If you are going to serge it together, then you can use clear elastic or a piece of ribbon. There are many ways that you can stabilize. My shoulder seams will also be pressed open and you can see that when that's pressed, that piece of interfacing will be hidden so it won't be seen, it's not ugly and it's really stable. At this point, you would sew your sleeves in on the flat if you're following instructions, you know that that is not something I ever do, so I'm just sewing my side seams first. I'll actually leave my sleeves for the end. I'll put those in after the bandies. I think it would be easier that way. Two more pretty long straight seams, press these open, then I can set this aside and start putting the band together. What I'm going to show you, you're going to do twice with the two bands. One's going to be inside, one's going to be on the outside, so I'll just show you once. You get your long band pieces and you get the curved edges to point outwards like this. That's how you put them right sides up. Then you take your small back piece and this is what's going to meet those seams over there. Then you take your bottom band piece. This has a curve going up, it's light, so make sure you get it correct. Don't put it with the curve facing down, it's going to be like this. You can see the slight curve. This is what's going to be sewn onto this side and then this side over there. Pin it and show you how it looks. Here on this bottom band you can see the single notch matches the single notch on the front band. So that helps you put it together, same here on the other side. And on the top you have double notches, double notches, and that helps you put that together. Whatever knit you're using, I would suggest you sew these with a sewing machine and press it open. It'll be way less bulky than trying to serge it, in my opinion. And then you repeat the same exact thing for the other set. There are four little seams to put one of these bands together, then when you do the other one there's four more. So there's eight little seams, the seam allowance is three eighths. After sewing this, I'm just going to press these open, tie it up, and then two bands go sewn right sides together. This is how the band looks with all the seams sewn. It's a big circle, and all you need to do is take one of them and place them right sides up like this. 
and then take your second one and place it on top right sides together i'm going to take my time and pin them matching all the seams very neatly and then it'll be one super long round seam sewing the outer edges of this band type circle the inner edges will be left raw because that's what's going to be sewn onto the edges of the cardigan. I'm going to be sewing these two band pieces also with my sewing machine and then I can snip into the curves. I think it'll be neat like that. I'm using a longer stitch length also because I think that prevents the fabric from stretching out too much. There are curved areas here so you really don't want to stretch these out. I really don't want to sew them together with a serger and then flip them right sides out. I prefer to do it with a sewing machine. So it's a really really long seam. Careful to match all the seams together for both layers of the band. They're sewn together here on the top curve where this is going to go on the back neckline. I've done a few snips. You can see the shape of the curve. So to reduce bulk, I've just taken notches all along this curve right there, up to the seam here. At the bottom I didn't because it's pretty straight, but here where the curve starts again, I've taken a few notches also. Those are all the little leftovers, all the little triangles I cut out. I never regret taking these because it does reduce the bulk and it makes it look smoother when you turn these right sides out. So now what we need to do is flip the band right sides out, needle it up and give it a press and then it will be ready to sew onto the cardigan. I've got both bands sewn on together and pressed. Everything's really neat. The inner edge there is raw and will go sewn onto the cardigan. Let me show you one thing. <laughs> the small back neckline band is this is what's going to go on the back and these seams will match the shoulder seams there. And then as you go over to the front, you'll see a notch. The notch is inside, you know, it's on the wrong side of the fabric. So I just marked it with a pin there and I've got those pins marked. I have that reference point marked on the cardigan itself. And then down here, you have this seam that will match the side seam and the other seam that will match the side seam there. This is the cardigan. So far it's sewn side seams and shoulder seams. The pockets are done. And you can see it's a rounded shape as well. And I'm just going to take my band, put it right sides together and go matching the band along all this end. When I've got it all pinned, it'll be one continuous seam. Make sure you have a lot of pins. I've used them all. My dish is totally empty. I want to show you from side seam to side seam at the back. The band is slightly shorter than the bottom of the cardigan. You can see a little bit of waviness there. That's because I had to stretch the band to meet like this. And then I pinned it as I went as I stretched it. It's only slight and you need this so that the band comes in and doesn't stick out. So that is something that's needed along the curve here. This is going to fit one to one. Here where the notch is on the front that matches the notch right there. And then the back fits the curve perfectly. Shoulder seam is match. I'm going to start here on the back and it's all 3 8 seam allowance. So it'll be a super long seam, rounded, all in one go. And I'm going to be sewing on my sewing machine also and then I'm going to clean the edges off with a serger. I am also going to top stitch at the end to keep all of this flat. Not very interesting sewing to see right now because it's just really long. This is the part where you have the pocket there and you're catching it with the band there on the side. Also a few layers there because there is a little band on the top edge of that pocket. Okay, so that seam is done. I'm gonna tidy it up and clean the edges with the serger. Now you can see on the band that there's some hand basting there. I did that to be able to just turn these right sides out properly and I was rolling the seam with my hand so that it was really flat and hand basting that. It always gives me a neat result. I find it better than if I just go straight to the iron and try to do it while I burn my fingers. So that's what that is. I'm gonna remove that when I'm done. It's serged, it looks really neat. I'll press the seam allowance towards the cardigan and that's it if you want, but I'm also going to top stitch just to keep it flat. I think sewing it there at a quarter of an inch is going to look nice. It's going to keep it flatter. So I've got my quarter inch presser foot and I'm just going to go all the way around. It'll be a pretty long seam also, but the quarter inch presser foot keeps it neat and makes it relaxing because I don't have to worry about going straight because the presser foot does it for me. Now, if you want to sew the hood, I did not include that in the video, but it's not much different. So you sew your hood to the neckline 
and then you have a hood there but you have raw edges so remember there was a little piece that goes at the back here on the band instead of that little piece you have a longer piece that will go here on the edge of the hood and it'll have a seam on the top and then you still sew the band and everything it'll be a round seam it's just going to include the hood as well so it's not that much different the diagrams on the pattern are really well explained so you'll be able to do it let me show you my cardigan i am so in love with it so pretty this fabric is really special it's got blue beige white black and it's got type of hound tooth print in different sizes so there's tiny ones medium sized ones and huge ones love it <laughs> there you can see my center back seam is pressed open and this is how i prefer to sew ponty roma I don't think I've ever sewn anything in Ponte Roma directly on the serger. I don't like the bulk. I just don't feel it presses really flat when you try to do that. So I prefer to do it like this. <laughs> this seam of the band meets the seam of the shoulder. I was really careful to make those match when I was sewing this together. And then the band goes curved all along the end there. When you hold the cardigan like this, the pocket seems to look floppy like that, but it doesn't look floppy when you put it on the body. It's fine. <laughs> it's just the way it looks on the hanger. Long sleeve, twin needle hem right there. Now the sleeve is the only seam I sewed directly on the serger at the very end. Right there. I didn't do that on the sewing machine. I didn't really need to. That seam is not going to be separate. It can be together. That's fine. So that's the only one that got directly sewn on the serger. My side seams are pressed open like that. Super neat. The band you can see is double. So, so well made i love the band like that's curved matches everything perfectly so nice really really different i love that the band is curved because whenever i see in patterns that you have to sew on a rectangle onto a curve i'm like thinking inside no this it's just you just can't it's gonna pucker it's gonna create like a bulk there and then it's just it, it just never looks right but this curved band does look right it's really nice pockets were really easy to sew that band you just press it put a lot of steam and then this band is a little bit shorter but it keeps the pocket close to the body and it's not going to flop open and it's quite a large pocket it's pretty large it's going to fit a lot of things i'm never going to use the pocket and when i make this again sleeveless i'll probably make it without the pocket because it doesn't really need to be there. I mean, it does if you love pockets, but if you don't really care for pockets, you can just not put it there and it won't change anything. Now, I don't think I've ever sewn a cardigan with bands that I have not top stitched. Because I think when you're working with heavier fabrics, medium weight fabrics, the top stitching there just keeps it really flat. I find that if I press it, it'll look okay, but not as flat as it could be. And also using my quarter inch presser foot makes that top stitching super easy, super relaxing and it looks so neat. Let's see it on. This is my Fraser cardigan from Love Notions in a size extra large with a standard bust. I chose a striking ponty print. I love the feature of the front, has a curved band and the pockets on the front are really easy to sew. The curved band lies really flat and neat. At the hips, because of the curve, it doesn't really reach the center front. The length at the back will cover your bottom. I like this length. This is the original one. I didn't adjust or make longer to adjust for my height. These pockets are super easy to sew. They're finished on the edge with a band and then they are basted onto the front piece and they are caught in the band at the bust area it reaches the center but it won't cross over i have a long sleeve i hemmed it normally you can also add a cuff if you want as an option here's a closer look at the neckline the chest the curve of the neckband at the back is perfect it's a really nice close fit at the neck fun cardigan to put together the curved band is everything it's gonna lie super neat there's gonna be no packets it has a center back seam for shaping i look forward to making another one in the future super satisfied with this make i really enjoyed sewing it. I'm gonna make this pattern again you know I make love notions patterns multiple times because they are super wearable they fit me really well so 
I know I'm gonna make a sleeveless one. <laughs> I already tried this one on before putting in the sleeves. And I know I need to do a tiny, tiny tweak here and there to make this armhole a little more closed, but totally doable, totally possible to just put a bit of binding in there. And then you can have a cardigan that's sleeveless. It's more practical for me sometimes. Remember that the Fraser cardigan is 25% off during the first week. It's got a lower price, so it's a good week to get it. I will leave you my affiliate link down below if you'd like to use it. I always appreciate it when you do use it. It's one of the ways I make an income by making all these videos on YouTube. So I really, really thank you for using my link. Always remember to use my code Karina10 altogether at checkout, and that will always give you an extra 10% on top of the sale price that you see there already. So that's always great. I hope you have a great start of your week. I have a really busy week and I'm excited about all the things I'm going to do for the channel this week, so expect to see a lot of me this week. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.